All right, guys, I'm going to walk you through a project that I created using XNA and the Farseer physics engine. Uh, Farseer, Farseer, however you want to say it. Uh, I will post a link in the description of how to download this. Also, it's important to note that I'm using uh, Farseer 3.3 for this. 3.2 and the older versions all have significant differences. Uh, well, not significant, it's just the method that they use so the code will definitely not work but here's what it does um, basically you're just clicking and adding blocks and they're reacting as you add them I don't have rotation set for this but it's all cool um, for some reason over here on the left side it seems like it wants to be really weird and act like there's something there to collide with I'm not sure about that yet. I'm going to look into it. It might just be a prob little problem that I have in my code. But other than that, let me walk you through walk you through how it works. Uh, first thing I had to do was load in two ping images, uh, block.ping and a platform.ping, which is the red thing. The block's white. Um, of course, I... Uh, you need to go up here to references and get the Farseer Physics XNA DLL in as a reference. Uh, you can find that in the download of 3.3 or I will also be posting this project somewhere online eventually for you to download and you can get it off of that. Um, another thing to mention is it also uses the convertunits.cs to convert uh, from pixels to the unit that the physics engine uses and convert from those units back to pixels. This comes with the samples that you can download from the Farseer website for 3.3. And it's important to note the difference. Uh, Farseer measures in meters. And if you just use that those measurements, you're going to have a really, 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 really small box. And it's going to take forever for you to do things. So that's why you convert it to pixels. It makes everything, makes the world bigger. And everybody goes home, goes home happy. Uh, now we're going to walk over here to the ball.cs, which is actually a block. Um, I just went ahead and I included all the uh, XNA stuff that's included in the game1.cs, which is the main file. I also included all the Farseer physics files. Um, I have a texture for an image, texture TD, that's basic XNA. If you don't know what that is, I'll recommend you some other tutorials to look at because this is a little bit ahead of you. Well, I don't want to say ahead, just you haven't quite got here yet. Um, body is used for XNA, not XNA, far seer to be able to represent the object within the world in a point. Uh, then we just come down here, I have constructor. I set the image equal to the texture that you can pass in for the constructor as we load it in in the main function. Uh, then body, then I do body factory dot create rectangle because this is a rectangle and I want to pass an instance of the world. The world class is coming from the main class and basically all that does is it represents the world. Um, so that's where all the objects will be able to interact within the uh, Farseer game engine, physical engine, whatever. But then you have to convert these X and Ys, which would be put in as pixel units, uh, to two sim units, convert units to sim units. You have to make sure you have that convert units.cs, which you can find in the sample project, and also the convert units dot two sim, sim units with the image dot height and then for density I just put it at 1.0 F at the body dot mass I have it at 0 .10, 0 0.01 F I was trying to get it to affect it but honestly it does not seem to affect it maybe I need to convert to units there I'm not sure yet um, then body dot type uh, it's dynamic because it's going to be able to move and restitution which is how much it can bounce is set at 0.2 F and I may be incorrect on this, but from the looks of it, it looks like the restitution. If it's one, it'll go back to the original height. 
if it's 0.5 it would go back to half the height when it bounces so on and so forth in the body dot position I make a new vector 2 and I convert the units of the X up here to some units for the project uh, then I also have a draw function um, nothing fancy here basic draw function only thing different from a normal draw function is that I have the convert units dot to display units back from the body position dot x which is the property of the body and for the body dot y position dot y and also the image dot width and image dot height for the width and height of the sprite and color dot white which means it won't have any effect then I also have a test down here to test if it's on screen and back to the main function I use this to be able to if it's not on the screen I can delete it from the from the file from the uh, memory because of the fact it's not on screen it's insignificant and doesn't need to be there anymore it's just taking up memory it could eventually cause your program to crash uh, so we'll go over here to the platform file now and body for Farseer I uh, also have a texture 2D image and I have the constructor for the platform it's pretty similar to the other class it has the world and it has a position coming in it has the width the height and the texture for the uh, platform uh, body is going to be a new body set in the world then I have body equals body factory dot create rectangle pass in the world I probably don't even need this body equals new body then I also pass in the float convert units dot to sim units width now this times two is because for some reason it seemed like uh, Farseer was letting it go through half the object so I did this um, I'm gonna have to check and see what's going on here I don't know if it's maybe in my code if it's actually a problem with the engine uh, image this is gonna be set to texture the image of the platform the textures passed in from the main function for this and the position is set to the p vector 2 position dot x and y and you have to convert them to sim units because that's position the position within the far seer world and then we have the draw again nothing special other than the convert units dot to display units and it uses the body dot position dot x from the uh, body created here now I'm gonna go over here to the game one dot cs I'm gonna check my time alright we're good on time alright game one dot cs first thing I do that you're gonna have to do I also deleted all the comments in here that X and A has because I don't like them but I have to use do using Farseer physics dynamics factors collision etc uh, list of the balls then I have to make the wor actual world so this is where the world comes from then I have a texture 2D in it for the ball or block. I started out with the ball, but I wanted to do block to see how uh, more efficient it was to have a block in the world than a ball. And uh, I also have a texture 2D barge, which is the platform. I don't know, I just made a random name for it. And then the actual platform is right here. And then this is important I have the width at 550 then I have the height at 450 here uh, that's only significant in the ball.cs where I check to see if it's on screen because that's the dimensions that are used there and then the world is set to a new world and this vector 2 right here is the gravity on the X and the gravity on the Y so as you see I have a gravity of 0 on the X and a gravity of 15.0 which is a float on the Y so that means stuff will fall and the balls I set that to a new list balls so you don't have any this has not been 
initialized or whatever the error is. And this is not significant, to, but to be able to see the mouse, I did this dot is mouse visible equals true. Now we come down here to the load content function. We set the ball texture 2D equal to block, which is over here. And the content, you have to make sure that's there. Uh, the barge is set equal to the platform texture 2D after it's loaded in from over here. And the platform, okay, what happened there? The platform set equal to the, a new platform with that you're passing in the world with a new vector 2, which is the position, and you pass in the width, the height, and the texture. Probably could have just got away without passing the width and the height, but this is a quick little throw together thing to get used to the engine. Uh, mouse state is set equal to mouse.get state. Uh, and I have it as m state, so I do if m state dot left button equals button state dot pressed, and then I down here I have if the ball count is less than 100, we're gonna add a ball. The idea is that of this is to make sure your computer doesn't get too bogged down because far seer will um, lag. Now I do understand there's three different types of collision modes. I don't think I have the fastest collision mode, I think I have the most accurate set right now. So you can of course always change that. Now for int b equals zero, b is less than balls dot count b plus plus. Uh, this is a for loop. It goes through all the balls and makes sure they're on screen. And if they're not on screen it'll remove them. And of course the balls are the blocks. Don't kill me on that. Uh, world dot step right here this is probably the most important part of this whole program. This is what makes sure your uh, world within Farseer is updating. Uh, game time that elapsed time dot total milliseconds. All this is doing is taking the game time here, which keeps track of how many how much time's passed since you uh, started running the executable, and it will do that according to that. So very important. I didn't have this when I first started and it caused me a headache for about two hours. Uh, now graphics device dot clear. I just set it to black. Now sprite batch dot begin and sprite batch dot end, which you have to have on containing the uh, draw functions and basically all I do is a for each ball in the list balls so here then I do b dot draw which will draw it. I also have to pass in the sprite batch for it to be able to draw it. And for platform dot draw sprite batch, same thing. And that's basically all there is to it. Uh, I hope I didn't go too fast. I was trying to make this last only fifteen minutes. With the explanation, we'll run it and play with it for a little bit longer. Uh we've got about a minute that I'll play with it and let you watch that doesn't sound right but anyway yeah. so it's pretty cool It'd be even cooler if I had rotation set on but I didn't do that because I'm lazy didn't feel like typing a little bit more it's also important to note that the way that I have the mouse set up It'll add as long as the mouse down is down. I don't have a boolean set to be able to control when it adds. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.